Welcome, one and all, to the KOE Nation for another Friday Rye Review. Folks, I am your Cave Extreme, Phil KOE. Here at KOE Nation YouTube and Twitch, the man of the hour, the man with the power, the man that makes the other podcast cower. Joined by my indomitable broadcast partner, the one, the only... Tony freaking G, like, share, subscribe. You know what's better than rye on a Friday? What's that? Stir fry. Day. Day. <sighs> so, give yourself two gold stars if you know what show that's from. So, folks, welcome here to the KOE Nation as we go deeper in to the 32 Ride Tournament, and we're getting into an entry that I'm very much looking forward to. Indeed. Because in the last bourbon tournament that we just did, this particular distillery shocked and amazed, made it to the final four. It did. It made much more noise than we absolutely anticipated. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Been waiting on this one for a while. Yeah, you've been holding on to this bottle for months. I, oh. I'm kind of shocked you... Uh, I am trying to remember when I bought that, and it's... it's uh, it? uh, I think I, I may have uh, bought it last year. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry, I couldn't help it. I think I bought that last year, honestly. I think I've been sitting on it for that long. That was really disappointing after the plastic... That was kind of a dick move. Here, if I, uh, making noise. <laughs> Fooey on you, Jim Beam. This better be better than your cap and tails it to be. Just well, a hey, fooey. What are you gonna do? But sometimes uh, the juice inside is not representative of the bottle that it holds. Trust I me. I know. So Jim Beam again. In my opinion, Jim Beam Black is the best budget value bourbon on the market right now. I don't think you're going to find one that's better. Let's see if Jim Beam Rye can hold up to its lofty cousin's re uh, reputation. All right. Let's see how it hits the nose. Subtle, but... Very rye, but all uh, yeah. the edges are gone. I was going to say... Uh, I hate it, to keep coming back it's to It's like it, a sharp rye, but yeah, smooth like, out. It like... Bullet, but with all the edges. Uh, yeah. Ground uh, well, out. bullet's a good. It, I, I hate to compare to other. It's a good example. A good, yeah. No, you're right. It's very. It's like a jagged rye, but it's been rounded out. There's a bread there. I don't. It's not cornbread, but it's not wheat bread either. I was gonna say, like a sourdough. Rye bread. Hey. Rye. <laughs> I was th I was thinking sourdough. <laughs> Do, do you think maybe it's rye bread? Maybe. <laughs> like, whoa. It's not, the, it's not wheat. Who's a, it's not wheat. It's not cornbread. It's not corn. What What possible grain could I be getting I here? don't know. God. It's like schnozberries. Little it's mysteries a, of life. Sometimes you just never find whoa, them out. Whoa. No, it's not a bad nose. Uh, it's 45% ABV. So, again, this isn't going to be one that should be intrusive. Mm. All right. Well, yep, let's uh, try it out. Oh. Sweet. Mm-hmm. There's a little cut. And almost gone, but still there. A little bit. Okay. More of an ethanol burn at the end, but... Yeah. Um, I get brown sugar at the front. A little bit of that rye comes through in the end. I'm getting like a... Small bit of spice and then dissipate. Which ain't bad. If I had to think of a fruit the whole way through, I'd think bananas. There's like a banana fruit base that kind of rides the whole thing through. I could see where you're coming at with that. Like, I'm guessing that the esters that made this particular batch are yeah. closer to banana than anything else. I, yeah, I'm not getting an orchard fruit or a, a tart fruit. It's more like a sweet, subtle, like it banana. It is more like tropical fruit. Uh, yeah, that's what I, that's where my mind goes. It's not bad. It's very smooth. Uh, shockingly, the rye bread does start. To get yeah, smooth. there you go. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thunk? It's got a it's got a decent finish that's not too forgiving, but. It's not offensive in any means. I mean, this is very... Uh, it's a little... I 
I note this because I think it's important here. If you feel the bottle, it's a little colder. I keep my bottles in my basement where generally the temperature is much lower than the rest of my house. And I think that definitely plays into a factor here because with some whiskeys, if you have them at standard room temperature, vastly different than slightly colder. Definitely different if you put it on ice or add water because that's going to open it up or dilute it. With it being just a little bit chilled off, I think that's definitely helping the flavor profile here for me because if this was a little bit warmer, I probably wouldn't find it nearly as as pleasant. And I specifically think of like that Hellcat Maggie Irish whiskey. It was terrible when it was hot, but cooled off without adding ice, I really enjoyed it. And I think that's kind of what's happening here. Yeah, this is... Uh... This is one I would actually see shining on the rocks and in a cocktail more than even uh, just straight up. And I'm enjoying it straight up, but I could see it really shining in those areas because, you know, Jim Beam, let's be frank, uh, they're one of those companies that know, um, well, this is probably going to get mixed with cola. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, it doesn't, like, even because these are the kind of brands that aren't bought by, like, aficionados and nerds of whiskey like us, okay? Like, so this... If you mix that, this with cola, it would basically well be equated to... If you if you said a, a Jack and Coke was like a bush light, this would be like a an IPA version of a bush light. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, there you go, folks. Um, That's why I think of most rides with Coke, though. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. So... Now we get to the hard part, T. Okay. The grading. We're going to grade this on a couple of five-star scales. And five meaning you have to have it before you shuffle off this mortal coil. Zero meaning pass it on by. The yeah. KOE Nation has advised you well. Indeed. So we're going to grade this as a rye whiskey. Okay. As a whiskey. Cascade Spirit. It's shelving. And for those new to the show, the secret fifth question. So... As a rye whiskey on a five-star scale, what would you rate this? I'm just going to go with my gut, and I'm going to say a solid three. This is, a, this is a cheaper one. This is more incredibly readily available. It's the Jim Beam brand. Not that that should steer you away from it by any means. But it's sweet. It's subtle. It's got a rye flavor. It's a, it's a very affordable and entry-level rye. There's nothing wrong with this at all. But there's nothing that's overly exciting either, so that's why I'm planting my flag right at three stars. And this is a new charred white oak, so it kind of copies, well, not, you know, they're a bourbon distillery. They're going to have yeah. new char oak barrels oh, yeah. everywhere. Like, they probably have more than enough. Cup to do runneth it. over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> their cup runneth over, yes. So, I'm going to disagree with you. As a rye, I'm going to give this 3.75. I figured I this, this was going to be right up your alley. Yeah, because <laughs> it's not spicy and hard on the end, and it just is delightful. Works. You can do a lot with this. This would be another one that if a if a cocktail calls for rye, I would want to reach for one. Yeah, this, this I would actually use this, I think, before Old Forester if I was going to cocktail a rye. Just because of that, that subtle sweetness with the banana base I, I really that's really appealing it's just not it doesn't come through hard enough in the flavor profile for me well all right so as a whiskey this is a wide wide world of sports folks uh as a whiskey like you said this would be a great base for any cocktail it's a it's an affordable one and being an affordable one doesn't hurt it at all it's a very nice easy drinking whiskey this is a this is a sipper you could sip on this all night if you walked into a bonfire party with a, a bottle of this in hand and a, and a glass or not because let's face it it's jim beam you might just be Passing straight out the campfire yeah this is this is great for that i think this this nails it for this category i'm gonna give it 375 as a whiskey because throw it's, it in your ice filled cooler yeah, with your beer this is and a, once the time is right pull that out once the sun's gone down pass it around the campfire yeah. If, if you're if you're if you like rye, this is a great one for that scenario. If you like just bourbon, Jim Beam Black, and it's all coming from the same distillery. So yeah, I'm gonna give this three seven five as a whiskey. Okay, I'm gonna be not quite as generous as you. I'm gonna give this three and a half as okay. a whiskey. Uh, I don't think it's quite close to the four star region. Uh, I there's a lot of good whiskey out there. There is. I just I think you this is diverse enough. That this is gonna cover a lot of bases. 
You can do a lot with oh, this. Oh, it's got a great mainstream palate. And I think this this is kind of an any occasion whiskey. It really is. This is a daily yeah. drink yeah. Of, of any kind. You could do this at any any. Hell, you could impress somebody with this. Go, hey, try this blind. And they'd be like, oh, that's really soft, subtle, sweet. Not bad at all. What is that? Jim Beam. Really? Yep. Uh, so, as a cask-aged spirit, Tony G, how would you grade this? I'm going to be much more critical in this area. 2.75. Wow. Okay. And why is that? Again, I'd like to see the proof go up just a touch for my taste. I'd like to see... Because we know that the Jim Beam brand... They, they've got some extra variations on their standard bourbon. The Devil's Cut, which we did not care for too much. There's a double oak that we'll be trying very soon. There's, of course, the black, which is, like you said, one of the best budget bourbons out there. I think that this is a good base, but they could definitely, definitely do a little bit more here and have a couple more offerings that would definitely change the game in terms of their uh, rye product. I can't disagree with anything you said, but I'm still going to give it three stars okay. as a cask age because that new char oak does kick it up just a little bit. It helps give it a little bit more of that flavor. Uh, so yeah, some thought that's, was that's put into it. That's true. So, all right, now, interesting question, the shelving. It's going to be right next to the old Forester on the bottom shelf. Ouch. This is one I'd be tempted to put on the middle shelf, but only tempted. It will go on my middle shelf and or my bottom shelf until I like drink away a bunch of stuff in my yeah. shelf. But now, the secret fifth question, Tony. When this bottle runs empty, will you seek another one? And what did it cost you, USD? I think this was a twenty-seven dollar bottle, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was right around thirty, right under thirty. Uh, but you could probably find it for under twenty-five in, in the right place. Uh, you know. Honestly, I might. I just might. Because uh, Jim Beam's done a lot to win me over since trying a lot of their actual, you know, base products and not getting into their fruity flavored line. You know, their their base offering is very plain Jane. Not a great bourbon. But almost everything after that, really, really decent to really good stuff. So this is what I might actually be proud to put on my rice shelf. So I, I, I might. Now, whether I will seek this bottle out will all depend on how it finishes in the 32 Rye Tournament, which you are going to have to like, share, subscribe right here at KOE Nation to see the conclusion of. So, T, anything else you'd like to say to the people? No, not bad at all. Not bad at all. So, folks, as I'm going to say around here, all that being said... Thank you for joining us for this very special review of Jim Beam Rye, and it is now entered into the Rye Tournament. Will it prevail? Will it win? You will have to tune in right here. You're going to have to like, share, subscribe right here, KOE Nation on YouTube and Twitch. Right I here. am. What? Right here. Oh, right here, okay. actually, within Compound G or Castle okay. KOE. So, folks, don't you dare switch that dial. Don't you dare go anywhere else before you like, share, subscribe right here. Folks, I am your King of Extreme, the Prince and Potentate of the Political Parlance, the man of the hour, the man with the power, the man that makes the other podcast cower, and one damn handsome man, if I do say so myself, signing off and handing it off to my indomitable broadcast partner, the one, the only, Tony G. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for coming by. Friday! Promise to refabricate you. Raging 
rivers of gold. That's what the brochure advertised. And now we're lost. We gotta take it down. Let you get slow. It's hard to survive. Nice. Eldorado. Oh, Lord. Well, let's see how that one went. Yeah. 